Hello. I am taking these long pieces of wood up to our new polytunnel. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. This is the first of two polytunnels that we're going to have on site. So this one is in the duck field, so the duck's uh, shelter is at the top there. Although uh, the ducks aren't in the field right now because they're locked down for the winter. And the second polytunnel will be going behind this in the food forest. And that will have uh, fruit trees growing in it uh, and vines and strawberries and that sort of thing. But this polytunnel is for all the plant propagation. And when we hold courses here, we'll also be holding them in this polytunnel. I'm very much uh, in the early stages of setting up and getting organised in here. It's mightily cold today and the wind is catching my breath. Actually, I'm not even sure it's the wind. I think it's just the cold. Anyway, I'm sorry I sound a bit breathless. Part of it is lugging heavy things up the hill and part of it is just that it's so cold. We got this polytunnel uh, from First Tunnels. They sent the construction team here and it took them just three days to put this polytunnel up and I am absolutely sure if we had been doing it uh, that would have been several months <laughs> to get it done. So I'm very pleased uh, that that is done and we are in a position where we can start using it straight away. And here's a quick look at how they put the polytunnel together.
think you can see that this cross rail here looks much higher than the one on that side. Um, but the reality is it's really not. And the reason it looks like this is because this site slopes so much uh, in that direction um, <laughs> that when you come down here, uh, this goes uh, just under my shoulder uh, and likewise <laughs> on this side. <laughs> This is just under my shoulder. So <laughs> it's just one of those things that the team have very cleverly done to allow uh, the polytunnel to be horizontal uh, across the ground. They've had to kind of make adjustments. So the poles on that side are considerably longer than the poles on this side. I hadn't realized what a big slope it was. Uh, so hats off to them uh, for being able to sort that one out for us. So there are double doors at each end uh, which slide open. I've got this well and truly closed off at the moment. I've got uh, these bits of old board here and things in front. This is to try and stop rabbits coming in. At the moment to stop the winds because uh, we've had uh, the really fearsome storm Arwen uh, this week. So Polytunnel is still standing and is doing very well. Um, but while I'm not using that doorway um, I might as well just keep that blocked off uh, for now. To give me um, areas to put things on here um, I'm creating this staging so the metal pieces uh, were put in by the guys from First Tunnels. I've then brought in very long recycled pieces of wood going that way and these are bits of old melamine. This really isn't ideal but it's what I've got and I am just recycling stuff. So these are from old wardrobes that simply don't fit into our new house. So I'm using them out here and they're great uh, for putting pots on um, to grow through for the winter. And should, uh, should we get hold of lots of uh, recycled woods that I can make a slatted work surface, then I will. But while we have all these recycled materials, it's much better to use them. Using a heavy cornstarch sheet mulching, uh, I've created paths uh, around three sides. I will do this eventually. Um, but uh, I've then laid some very lovely uh, oak wood chippings on the top. Now, when I say I have, um, I've laid just <laughs> that end there. Uh, Hugh uh, Richards visited me yesterday. He said, come on, Liz, let me move some wood chips. So really kindly, uh, he brought all of those wood chips up for us. Uh, and now those paths are done just like that, which is really lovely. And my idea uh, in the center area here, this central growing area is that I will have uh, on the ground beds. What well, sort of on the ground beds? They'll be on the ground uh, on that side, on the higher part of the hill. And then I'm going to raise the side up slightly on this side. And then each bed will be a level uh, going across that way. So it'll almost look tiered um, as it goes uh, across the width here. I'm going to have pathways between, uh, not only going lengthways, but some going across as well. Because one of the things I learnt in our previous polytunnel was I found it quite a chore to run down the side of one line and back up the other. And what I would end up doing is kind of pushing through plants that were growing and potential for damaging them. And there is a space here to have pathways going across. So I will do that. And I'm also thinking I'm going to put in uh, a couple of compost heaps. So using pallets uh, tied together with baling twine to have one here and one at the far end and then in the autumn, I'll really fill those up, get them going so that they produce plenty of heat. And hopefully uh, they'll help warm the polytunnel during the earlier part of the winter as that's breaking down. And then uh, in late spring and early summer, I can plant things like uh, cucumbers or courgettes into the top of that compost heap. Let those plants really enjoy all, the, all that nutrition before I then empty the compost heap out into the garden fill it all up and start again. I've got these boxes here uh, until I have built a little ramp. This is because of the difference in the, the slope of the, the hill. So they're there to dissuade bunnies from going in. Well, and the ducks when they were out and about. 
My next task is to uh, gather all the plants that I want to keep in here over winter and bring them in. But I think now it's time for a cup of tea. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. I also hope you'll join me again next time.